This is Robert Taylor bringing you the story of the Blue Angels, the United States Navy's flight demonstration team flying supersonic Grumman Tigers. The mission of the Blue Angels is to demonstrate precision formation flying to the men of the United States Navy. As a former naval aviator and flight instructor, I can appreciate the skill required to fly with this incredible accuracy at speeds well over 500 miles per hour. The Blue Angels perform maneuvers taught to every naval aviation cadet for combat skill. The team, however, performs them at eye level and with wingtip clearances of only three to five feet. They're not a stunt team. Stunts require a certain luck factor. And when pilots fly like the Blue Angels day in and day out, luck is something they can depend upon. even the impossible becomes possible. This maneuver is used to start the show. Planes break to the four headings of the compass and then dive toward a point at a closing speed of over 1,200 miles per hour, passing within 10 feet of each other at nearly ground level. Leader of the Blue Angels is Commander Ed Holly of Aiken, South Carolina. The left wing position is flown by Lieutenant Lefty Schwartz of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Lieutenant Bob Rasmussen of Rio Vista, California is the right wing man in the diamond. Lieutenant Nello Perosi of Hudson, Massachusetts flies the difficult slot or tail end Charlie's position. The Marine member of the team is First Lieutenant Tom Jefferson of Birmingham, Alabama, who is the solo leader. Lieutenant Herb Hunter of El Paso, Texas, flies the other solo tiger in maximum performance maneuvers. These are the Blue Angels, the men who make flying their business and precision their art. The faces change since this is about a two-year duty assignment. They are selected from the ranks of naval aviators on the basis of skill. And when their tour is finished, they go on to routine assignments. But the team persists. They... Ain't T to Taylor. Ain't T to Taylor. Say, aren't you forgetting someone, Bob, old buddy? <laughs> Excuse me, Bags. Ladies and gentlemen, another member of the Lieutenant Bruce Bagwell of Toccoa, Georgia. One of his many duties is to take members of the press and the military on jet indoctrination flights in the team's two-place Grumman Cougar.
the angels come to Earth, they're much like other mortals of like age. Some are domesticated. Others are trying to become so. Or trying to outrun it. As human specimens, they are nearly perfect according to their flight surgeon, Doc Lures. Their wives, much like other wives, share complaints about their husband's work. 60 shows a year keep the angels away from home too much, and this upsets the family's domestic routine. This is what bothers the wives, not the flying. The home of the Blue Angels is Pensacola, Florida, where they are a part of the Naval Air Training Command. Eyes front, mister! It takes a lot of spirit to make a team, for every man is part of the other. But it also takes work teamwork. And this is where the rest of the Blue Angels work, for the team is more than seven pilots. The Blue Angels who maintain the planes also strive for perfection in keeping them in top flight condition. Any small defect noted in the air is immediately traced down and corrected. delicately balanced partnership of man and machine can tolerate no imperfections when you fly only a broomstick's length apart. Every Blue Angel is a specialist, and because everyone does his job well, they are known as the cream of precision flying organizations. The planes themselves are not special aircraft, but are production models in use in the fleet. The team's strenuous performance, however, places more than usual demands upon these men who move about the country with the pilots and their planes, working extremely long hours in order to have the aircraft ready and in flawless condition for each demonstration. Only volunteers are used for this demanding work, and they enjoy the highest respect, not only of their own officers, but of the entire Navy. These men, whose skills make possible the team's performance, are under the supervision of Lieutenant Commander Bill Olson, engineering officer. Even the flying angels have ground duties. Raz is the personnel officer. Tom is material officer. And Bags handles all the fan mail in addition to his other duties. Nello is operations officer. Leave it on, Herb. There's fog moving in on the coast. Dog gone. Herb is the first Louie, which means he's responsible for the upkeep of squadron facilities. Lefty is the administration officer and coordinates all squadron business for the commanding officer. Hey, boss, uh, due to this front here, the urologist said we won't get up till 1300. Hey, boss, listen to this. The old man writes that for the last quarter, the Blues were again the largest single factor to inspire college men to become naval aviators. That'll pay the rent. We won't be much of an inspiration if we don't get up to practice. You're sure right there, boss. I don't know. 
Look at this darn front here. There have been many pilots before who proudly wore the Blue Angel insignia. Good pilots, men who distinguished themselves in combat and in peace. Good pilots, good planes, and constant practice. The combination that has inspired millions with confidence in the ability of America's naval air arm. That has inspired countless other naval pilots to achieve the best. To strive for the perfection that marks the Blue Angels. They were organized back in 1946 in Grumman Hellcats. Then came the newer Bearcats with more speed and maneuverability. Jets were making their appearance not long after, and so in 1949, the Angels moved into Grumman Panthers, the fighters they flew in Korea. In 1954 came the swept wing Cougar. Now the Blue Angels are flying supersonic Grumman Tigers, the ultimate in speed and performance. Flying this close at these high speeds, the airflow creates a proximity effect that wants to repel the airplanes. To overcome this proximity effect, Lefty has to fight to hold his position. Rass, who has the same problem on the right wing, counteracts Lefty's effect on the leader's plane. When Nello is in the slot position, Commander Holly, the leader, is so balanced by all three Tigers that he could, though he never does, take his hands and feet off the controls and the formation would push him all the way around the road. Precise naval aviators can become through practice. It felt pretty good. How'd it look to you, Nello? A bit ragged on top, boss. Uh, we say we try it again. This is the keynote of the Blue Angels' performance. Between shows, they're in the air practicing every day, ironing out the little problems. The team will practice a maneuver many times at altitude. When they feel they can do the routine ten times out of ten without getting hairy, they bring it down on the deck. The maximum performance pilots necessarily practice alone. The same proximity effect in the formation exists between the solo plane and the ground. And they claim it's easy because they ride a cushion of air when really low.
there is a fraternal feeling that exists between good pilots, and this extends to other flight teams, like the Air Force's Thunderbirds. To the second team, the birds. This spirit, which is such an essential part of any team, is best seen after every flight in the informal give and take of the debriefing sessions, or skull sessions, as they are called. Here, worn and weary from the constant strain of flying, they let the tense human mechanism unwind and analyze the flight just past. In spite of fatigue bordering on exhaustion, each maneuver is discussed in detail. Each pilot contributes his criticisms and suggestions, all to the end of achieving perfection as a team. For to fly like the angels is a complicated business. It's no simple feat of acrobatic prowess and nerve like the barnstormers of former years but the result of scientific precision as carefully organized as a ballet and requiring infinitely more complex coordination of supersonic aircraft and hair trigger human reactions. Power settings, air speeds, rate of turn, G's. What went wrong with that maneuver? How to improve this one? Over and over, ironing out all the bugs and then into the air again followed by another skull session and then rest. Two hours of this type of flying a day is about the limit. And tomorrow is another day. Tower from Blue Angel Leader, taxi and takeoff instructions for six. Roger, Blue Angel Leader. Cleared to runway 13. Winds light and variable. Over. Roger, from Blue Angel Leader.
men, blessed equipment, and constant practice. This is your United States Navy. bringing you the story of the Blue Angels, the United States Navy's flight demonstration team flying supersonic Grumman Tigers. The mission of the Blue Angels is to demonstrate precision formation flying to the men of the United States Navy. As a former naval aviator and flight instructor, I can appreciate the skill required to fly with this incredible accuracy at speeds well over 500 miles per hour. The Blue Angels perform maneuvers taught to every naval aviation cadet for combat skill. The team, however, performs them at eye level and with wingtip clearances of only three to five feet. They're not a stunt team. Stunts require a certain luck factor. And when pilots fly like the Blue Angels day in and day out, luck is something they can depend upon. to prove that with practice, even the impossible becomes possible. This maneuver 